one thing that I discovered on YouTube just the other day, and this is a, a fellow who's who's promoting my work. Uh, and against my work, he posted, uh, you know, the actual video of of, of Bill Stills and Ellen Hodgson Brown uh, explaining their purported solutions. And so, what I'd like to do is is play this through um, just one time in 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 its completeness, uh, and then uh, and then go back and play each individual part and. Uh, uh, you know, expand upon uh, an analysis of it, if you will. So, uh, if you'll indulge, indulge me just at least this far, I'm, I'm going to play this file once through. I'd just like you to listen to it carefully in regard to, you know, all the things that we've, uh, you know, uh, spoken about so far and uh, see what you make of this. And then uh, we'll play each individual part and uh, uh, see how all this shakes out. So, here we go. In Ellen Brown's solution, the government would create all the money debt-free. Some of it would be simply spent into the economy, but most of it would be lent into the economy at low interest or no interest to local governments or individuals. In her model, money lent into the economy minimizes the inflationary effect of new money. The solution to all this is to return to the uh, government-issued money of the American colonists, and particularly the colony of Pennsylvania, which had its own bank and issued government credit. Congress feels that they have to bail out the banking system, and the real reason is that they, we think that we're dependent on this banking system for our credit, but we're not. Like Dorothy and all the characters in The Wizard of Oz, we have the power to create our own money and our own credit. The government's mentality in general seems to be, we'll do what we have to do and we'll worry about paying for it later. But what you could do is pay for it now. In other words, you don't have to pay for it later. You don't have to pay for it with debt. You can just pay for it with money. In the Money Master's solution, the government creates all the money in the form of debt-free U.S. notes or their electronic equivalents and then spends that money into existence through the normal budgetary process. Existing money is, of course, replaced one for one with the new debt-free money. The national debt is paid off with this new money as well, but to prevent inflation, reserve requirements are gradually raised on the commercial banks, requiring them to maintain 100% reserves. In other words, banks could then only loan out money they actually have. Okay, so uh, very interesting. Um, I uh, imagine you would have some questions about this if you've been following along very well. But anyway, um, let's uh, let's let's go back over the first part of that. In Ellen Brown's solution, the government would create all the money debt-free. Some of it would be simply spent into the economy, but most of it would be lent into the economy at low interest or no interest to local governments or individuals. Okay, so did you get that? It isn't a debt. It's going to be spent into circulation. And how exactly do you imagine what he just said could possibly work. Where, where did you come up with this idea that money somehow cannot be a debt? Well, if in truth, this goes back to this Pennsylvania currency that, uh, you know, suddenly somehow this lawyer who's become an author on monetary reform um, uh, learned about somehow, and I'd raised it in my work, and you wonder how she discovered it in the course of her work otherwise. And in fact, it's a, it's a, <laughs> the, my account of it is an, is an explanation of, 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 of an almost mathematically perfected economy from the mouth of Benjamin Franklin in the words of Mike Montagna. So now, evidently, nonetheless, they're using this Pennsylvania currency, and the money isn't a debt, but uh, then again, can it possibly not be a debt? Because if you're going to pay it out of circulation, obviously, you couldn't finance your, your house with this. Let's listen to this just one more time. 
What is going on here? Brown solution, the government would create all the money debt free. Some of it would be simply spent into the economy, but most of it would be lent into the economy. Oh, wait a minute. Is that a contradiction right there? Some of it would be spent into the money, but others, other, the rest of it would be lent into the economy? In other words, some of it is a debt, but it's debt-free? These people don't even make rudimentary sense, you see, and they are standing up in front of us as purported experts. What does this all mean? Let's listen to the next part. In her model, money lent into the economy minimizes the inflationary effect of new money. Well, now, it is lent into the economy. First, he said it isn't a debt. Now, it is a debt. Oh, okay, this is just great. Let's go over that one more time. Let him finish with that In part. In her model, money lent into the economy minimizes the inflationary effect of new money. Really? Well, this is the very uh, question that she never answered. To me, how does new money lent into the economy not eradicate inflation if it's done properly? What do you mean minimize? You mean there might be some inflation? If so, how so? If uh, Ellen Hodge and Brown obviously knows who I am, she know I she knows I advocate a singular solution. She knows I advocate mathematic proof of singular solution to both inflation and deflation. And now they're claiming somehow, without stating even how you would do that, that they're going to minimize inflation? Why would you want to minimize it even rather than solve it? And if you want to solve it, why don't you recognize the solution that already exists there? Let's go on. The solution to all this is to return to the uh, government-issued money of the American colonists, and particularly the colony of Pennsylvania, which had its own bank and issued government credit. Well, now, is that even actually uh, true? Um, she claims that this bank was issuing government credit. Well, um, how would that actually even exist or, 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 or transpire that a bank would issue government credit? After all, um, it could issue credit to the government if it had it to give, but if it's, in, if it's creating this money, it's not issuing credit at all. The people that accept the money are, accept, are, the, are the true creditors because they're accepting property for no more than a promissory obligation. Again, this purported bank is simply I issuing evidence of our promissory obligations to each other. So, not even it, does, it isn't even happening, what she says. And now, somehow, though she hasn't even explained how, this bank is not doing such a destructive thing. Well, if you actually study any of the history back at the time, there's a paper you should read, and that is, um, it's called uh, uh, A Modest Inquiry into the Nature and Necessity of a Paper Currency. It's, uh, a, it's a plagiarism uh, uh, purportedly written by Benjamin Franklin. He borrowed the idea from another author of the time. But in it, he details, you know, um, you know, their idea that, in fact, when they left the golders, the, the idea of the gold or silver standard, that they prospered to a greater degree under a paper currency. He guesses that some amount of circulation might be too much, others too little. But he doesn't even resolve it into what is exactly right, even to preserve the uh, integrity of the promissory obligation. These were just fledgling ideas at the time. And Ellen Hodge and Brown, in order to purport to uh, introduce a, uh, a solution to you,